Hello, welcome to this episode of No Blasters with me, Karen Bartlett. Before we get stuck in uh, and introduce you to our guest, let me tell you about a couple of things we have going on at the minute. So over at patreon.com forward slash no blasters, there's extra me. That's what that's what you get. So for three quid a month, you get extra time, uh, which is another No Blasters, basically, on Thursday uh, mornings. You also get the Noodle Bar every Sunday, which is me and Kev knobbing around with guitars, uh, an audio podcast, which we film sometimes. You will also get Smells Bitchin' every now and again, which is me cooking. And you also get uh, pre-announcements. You get a midweek uh, check-in where I just check in with you and see what you're up to. You also get a Sunday bulletin where I check in and see what you're up to and let you know what I'm doing. Uh, for £6 a month, you get all that, plus you get things earlier, you get smells bitching earlier, you get access to message us and uh, arrange to play me on FIFA, you get your own Patreon episode, and you also get discount off tickets uh, in those uh, Patreon pre-sales. So this is all over patreon.com forward slash no blasters. We are absolutely smashing our content. We we smash out specials and everything. You got the Goblin King live show on there. You've got the first live podcast we ever did. Speaking of live podcasts, speaking of live podcasts, at the Mandela Hall on the 17th of December this year, we will be doing the first No Blasters live Christmas podcast special. It is going to be fucking sensational. I have already lined up great guests. We will have FIFA on the big screen. We will have prizes, there will be costume, there will be tomfoolery. There may even be a, a raffle, um, which is something that I stand by being a great thing. Um, uh, what I like to do is raffle off prizes from our sponsors and also tickets to come see me at yet another event. So please come to that. This is on the 17th uh, of December in the Mandela Hall, No Blasters, live podcast. It's going to be fucking sensational. Links to those are in the description. Today's episode is sponsored, as you can see, by Beer52.com. That's B-E-E-R 52.com. Beer52.com. So, basically, if you go on to Beer52.com forward slash blasters, you can get a deal where they'll send you out a crate of beers. So, eight beers, craft beers, uh, and um, snacks. So, you'll get, like, scratchy which is a great name, uh, Scratchy Olive Crackers. Scratchy is like what I call it when I scratch my bag. Um, and sour cream and chive crunchy peas, high in protein, uh, 25% off your first order over there as well with this wee, this wee snack. Great times. So if you go on to beer52.com forward slash blasters, you can get all this, eight beers, these snacks, for five ninety five. That's just for postage. So it's a subscription service. So after that, you would choose beers. You pick what you want. Um, if you don't like, uh, say, like dark ales or, or dark dark beers or whatever, you can get a light-only uh, crate. You can also um, get beers from 40 countries across five continents. They have everything, all, all the beers you could possibly want. It's a great time. Come straight to your door. You won't have tried some of these beers before, and then if you like it, you can go get more. So get on over to beer52.com. Like I said, that's B-E-E-R 52.com forward slash blasters. Today's episode is also sponsored by Joxer. As you know, Joxer is the finest restaurant on this good earth, right? Joxer have locations in Hollywood and Bangor. They have one of the best menus I've ever seen. Joxer is the home of chaffles. There are many pretenders to this throne. Let me explain to you in chapter and verse how Joxer is better than all of them. The sriracha, the maple, the vibe, the atmosphere, the chicken itself, the waffles themselves. Maybe, maybe you're there on your own enjoying it by yourself in the peace and quiet of your own mind. Maybe you're there with friends and family. It is a great time. Please go to Joxer. Check it out now. They are open late every week from Thursday to Sunday from 5 until late. You can get drinks. Uh, they do amazing drinks. They do all kinds of cocktails. They do mimosas. They do um, pina coladas. The menu's brilliant. They're very accommodating for all your dietary needs. They are dog friendly during the day. They are just a, it's just a great place. It's actually just a great place. Please go check it out. Uh, if you're making a booking, check it out on Res Diary. They're also going to be doing late uh, openings 
uh, especially for Christmas between the 19th and 23rd of December. So please get over, use Res Diary if you're going to make those bookings there, and they will sort you out. Loads of space in the one in Bangor, loads of tables in there, but it's always jammed. So book early. Me and Chloe went to it a while back there a couple of weeks ago. Place was absolutely rammed on a Saturday, and it was rammed early. So do try and get yourself in there early with Res Diary. Also, as I said, the home of Chaffles, uh, but al- also the home of possibly uh, the dirtiest wee 15s you've ever had in your life during the day. So check that out. And yeah, so all good. Uh, enjoy Joxer, enjoy Beer 52, enjoy our Mandela show, enjoy our Patreon. Let's get into this episode. Today's guest is none other than... And I radio legend, radio royalty, radio I royalty. I wouldn't say royalty, and I wouldn't say legend. No, I'm just a guy on the radio. Oh, he's just oh, you humble bastard. <laughs> Pete Snodden is here. Pleasure. Great times. Thanks very much for coming in. Excellent. Shouldn't last too long. Some cars parked outside, <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, I don't want a parking ticket. Oh no, mate, getting the tickets. I got one. I got one on the Lisburn Road a while ago, and I parked outside Cafe O, and in fairness. I knew there was a chance of getting a ticket, but I thought I could see my car. I could see my car, but like the guy, he, I don't know, he must have been like a ninja or something because he, he got in and out, gave me the ticket and left. I was like, dude, come in and, I don't know, I think if I was a traffic warden, I'd be too kind. I'd definitely be the type. I would go over to the cafe and go, anybody on this, say it, Leon, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was minging. Do you know what it was? It was, on a, it was on a Saturday and I thought it was only a Monday to Friday bit. But it wasn't, and I got screwed. I hate that. We also got dinged speeding over in England. One of us did, either me or Chloe. We haven't worked out who it is yet. I believe it was her. And if it was you, she'll take a point. Uh, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> not not on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think um, I w- see. I I have three that are from ages ago because I was stuck in bad traffic one day, and um, like really bad. Like this is a pathetic story. We were moving so slowly that the policeman who gave me three points for looking at my phone actually walked up to the window. This is how slow traffic was going. He was going the other way, and the, he got out of his car, walked over, knocked the window, and told me, like, do you turn and pull in? That's how slow it was moving. And, uh, yeah, I got three, but that was a while ago. They're, they're going to be they're gonna be off soon. But we don't know which... We just don't know... We, we swapped driving. This was over in England. So we swapped driving at one point that day. So we don't know which one of us... Was driving. I think it was Chloe. It was me. Um, so how's things anyway? Yeah, things are good. Can I just say for yeah. your sponsors, like no script or anything, just straight in there. Just smashing it. You should also say that if you turn up the jock, sir, you might end up in the podcast like I did too. Oh, ago. yeah, absolutely. And also these uh, sour cream and chive crunchy peas. You missed a massive point. High in protein, my friend. <laughs> High in protein. High in protein. High in protein. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> um, how's things going then with the show? Thanks cool for, FM. You enjoy it right. Yeah, it's been... How long have you been doing that show? So I've been at Cool FM for 20 years officially, wow. 22 years unofficially, because it's knocking around for a couple of years, not getting paid and just trying mm. to get on. So yeah, so I'm breakfast for 16 odd now. Wow. And the the current, you know, what we're doing with the show with Paolo and Rebecca and myself, mm. we've been working with each other now. It's the longest stint on breakfast, so it's well over eight years. Wow. And it's good fun. And yeah. they're still paying us, so I'm <laughs> delighted to be there. And so hasn't it moved though, didn't it? Did, do you still do it down in, like, it's, like, near Newton Arts? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Kiltonga Industrial Estate, the hub of, um, I suppose, it's, it's like the showbiz capital of Northern <laughs> Ireland. You go in there past um, Pritchett's Foods, mm, where they mm. do long-life milk and stuff, <laughs> and then down there, there's a bakery called Patton's. Right. right? Oh, Yeah. Really good sauce. I, I know patents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I know these wee weird. I know wee wee locations for pastries around yeah. around Ulster. So it so patents in there, and then there's a place that does the green egg barbecues. Right. You know those really exp- expensive yeah, ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so we're down in there, and like it's it's that's class. It's I class. didn't know that's where patents was. They they um they do these dirty uh, sodas with cheese and bacon built into the. Built into the mix, if you know what I mean. So when you grill it, you get like cheesy bacon in the bread. 
It's very dirty. It's a, it sounds not as good as it actually is. Yeah, it's a great time. I really do believe that they, they miss a trick. So I've been going there for like 22 years. Mm. And when you walk in, the, the factory's on the left-hand side. So you're walking to the car park, you go through the gate. My understanding is it's just next door. And so you have a hatch there. Yeah, we, we, we hatch, you know, because the boys start in there like 2, 3 in the morning, yeah. right? So I think she go in there, open the wee hatch, I get my sausage roll first thing and then truck on yeah. to the show. It doesn't happen. What, um, what time do you be starting now? 6 o'clock. Wow. And so how much of it is, like, on, say, if you're... And what time is the actual show starting? Is six it o'clock. Oh, the show starts Aye, at so, so I'm in there about 5.52. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so then do you do, like, say, a wee bit of, like, pre-production would be... Like, you are like how far are you out? Like, if you're no. on a Monday, do you do a wee bit on Monday for Tuesday? No, or? so it's, I... Listen, I don't know what way you guys, in terms of being comedians, work, but um, the way... The way we do it um, is I walk around just waiting for things to happen. Yeah. Right? And then I write them down on my phone, in my notes. And then that's that just... And, and I've, I've, I've realized over the years that I can switch off, but you mm. never truly switch off because you're always on the lookout for something. Yeah. So if I'm out, let's say me and you're in the jocks here, right? Some punter comes in and then something funny happens. Yeah, yeah. I'll write it down. We'll probably talk about it the next day and then use the audience in terms of getting their stories and the yeah. same sort of situations and stuff. But... The, the great thing which I love about radio being live and not on demand mm. like this is the fact that if something happens when we're on air, like let's say we've got a bit that we're going to do at 10 past eight, some Rebecca's been out at the weekend and she's mm. ran into someone and whatever's happened and we go, right, we're going to run with this and then we take a phone call from someone and we just go, right, we'll shelve that, we'll move out to tomorrow and we'll run with this. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's really cool that we can just sort of change everything yeah. on the hop. Yeah, because I, I worked for a wee bit um, in Talkback you know the the BBC William Crawley show. It was uh, these were in the in the the Wendy Austin glory days. Um, I worked there for a bit. And I loved that. But we she's a lovely lady she by is, the way. She is, and uh, she was really really kind with me whenever because I was just there sort of like uh, on experience when I was training like, and um, I was in there like, um, you w- would actually it, it was great because I sort of I remember on like the first day I had in there. Like, part of what we were doing, like, because obviously by the time Talkback comes on, uh, a lot of news programs have been on that day that have had a swipe at the big stories. So you're either doing lesser stories or you're doing um, the big ones from other angles. So, like, sometimes you'd have to scar through, you know, like those local newspapers, like the anti town News or Impartial Reporter or something like that. The Morn Observer. The Morn Observer. The Banker and County Down Spectator. All these ones, the right? The Newton Arts Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> the Lisburn star. Right. So you're like raking through those and like coming up with wee ideas. And I remember on like the first the first day I was like trying to make a good impression. And uh, at the at the production meeting, everybody else had done like done their bit and somebody was like, Right, okay, any other ideas? And I, I went, Yeah, that's my bit and I jumped in and was like, What about this? What about that? And like three things I pitched that morning, went into the show that day and I was like So I kinda I kind of got to maybe do a wee bit more then because the like, first day went well, so I got to do actual because there was a couple of people like me because I had spent like three days at the politics desk doing nothing like like literally nothing and I was like I went and said to the guy who had us in on the experience mate can I get somewhere and he goes they could use you in talkback I went right and I loved it in there but um one of the things in talkback is like you're always you're always planning ahead for days and days because guests, you need guests and they'll drop in and out and all. But suppose like if there's three of you and you're, you've been doing it now for a long time, you're all on it. And if you all have that attitude of like yeah. writing stuff down, you, that's loads of material. Absolutely. Or, I mean? or something happens and, the, you know, Paolo drops it into the group chat or something like that. But, you know, the, the thing is, right... The great thing which I love about radio is number one, said the immediacy of it, um, the relationship with the audience that you build up over years, um, and then the relationship the three of us have together because um, it's you can't just put two or three people in a studio and just hope it works. Yeah. Sometimes you can be really lucky, but more often than not, it doesn't really work that way. So um, yeah, the guys are great, and yeah. Um, yeah, I love working with them. Yeah, it's great crack. Like I mean, and see the um, do you do. I don't know if it's on your show specifically. Thanks for listening. The, Thanks for listening. The, uh, the, the, Number one the, fan. The Number it? one fan. Until well, the next sucker comes in and sits thing, in this seat. One thing that I love that I've definitely lost about a mortgage on probably is the, the Cool FM cash call. Listen, I'm flat out on it. Listen, flat out, damn. Listen, Portland. text cash is 63103. Make sure you know, you know what... 
<laughs> the total is yeah. that way, all right? Uh, two pound to play plus your standard message rate. It is, it all is. right, <laughs> all the T's and C's online. <laughs> Make sure that you live in Northern Ireland. <laughs> oh, all I'm right. Sorry, so. And See, whenever currency, whenever currency dials your digits after five on a Friday, you pick up, you tell them how much it is. <laughs> Boom, See when people. In. See when people don't answer the phone. Oh my god! The the it's a mix of like rage and then rollover anxiety that I get because I'm excited <laughs> that it's gonna roll over. Some of the reactions are burning, but my heart goes out. There was one guy, and I did the rounds on WhatsApp or whatever, one guy who got the total wrong, <gasps> and he missed out on I don't know how many thousands. Oh, my God. And I just... <sighs> you just cry. Like, it's oh, it's Yeah, so but I can only imagine what he's going through. I know, yeah, it's so brutal. Like, it's like, I'm, I imagine, like, imagine getting, like, that, a missed call at, five, you know, five past five on a Friday, you know, from, from presumably a withheld number. <laughs> like, you're going... Oh, was that your left hand? Uh, I know. Mean? Well, anyway, so listen, you, you watch out. Quarter past five this Friday, <laughs> your phone will be off a hook. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> um, so what's your what's your crack then outside of doing the show every day? I mean, what's your sort of like, if you're heading in there for six in the morning, you go to about 10, and then you maybe be in there for a bit after. What's, what's a day in the life after that? Do you go for a nap after that, or what's your... Are you flat out? No, I, I just go home to bed, because that's what everyone thinks. So you go mm. in there in the morning, you talk crap for four hours, and then you just go home. That's what everyone thinks. Uh, no, that's not that's not what happens. Um, so I'm self-employed, right? Just yeah. like you, all right? And um, so the, the radio is what I've always wanted to do, but you got to have, in order to make it work for you mm. and work for your family, right, you got to have other stuff going on. So over the years, um, I'm, I'm very fortunate. To, I've got a lot of interests, right? And I've been very fortunate to be able to make those interests sort of pay, I suppose, mm. for me. So... Um, I'm doing stuff that I really love. So I do a lot of events, black tie do's and that sort of thing. I still DJ. So DJing was what really got me into it in the first place. So I do a wee bit of that. Not as much as I used to, but still do a bit of that. Where's your, where's your DJing on now? I know, so, I know you do stuff in the Thirsty Goat still, do you? Oh Yeah, upstairs. Yeah. Uh, I've, been do, I've been in there for a long time and I probably do one, one a month or one every couple of All months right. in there. And that's really it from nightclubs. And then... I've been fortunate enough this year to do like like the Belsonic and open some shows in the SSE and that type of thing. Yeah. So that's great. Um, and then do a lot of sporty type stuff. You know, do stuff with Ulster Rugby and with Northern Ireland football um, and that sort of thing. So there's always plenty going on. And then you've got, you know, um, a lot of sort of uh, sponsorship type stuff mm. with a script. Um <laughs> occasionally, um, which is great. So I'm very lucky because, I'm. listen, I'll be honest with you and I can sit here and I'm not being smug, but uh, anything that I'm doing, um, I love doing it. Mm, no, so, that's great. So, so it's just really, because, listen. But that, do you not find it that so because, I mean, that's that's from working hard though. Like, I personally, I wouldn't be going anywhere at 6 a.m. every day. Like, that will never be, that will never be my life. So, like, when I look at somebody doing that, I go, that's hard work. Aye, but do you know what I mean? But the reason you're up at that time in the morning to go and do it is because you enjoy it. Aye. Because let's face it, you know, if you walked into the office and went, oh, quarter five is too much for me. No, yeah. well, we've got someone else tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's always somebody, yeah. You know, and that's but that's, but that's also, you said there about like being there unofficially for the two years as well. What was that like? Because I know that that's, I've seen so many people do that. Yeah. Where it's like you, you're... You're doing stuff for free or for, for for expenses maybe, or you're like, especially like in new news is very like that as well. Yeah, it's the best grinding you will ever get, and you work out brave and quick, I suppose, whether or not it's the environment you want to be in, and then also you you, you get, I suppose, to see the other side of it because mm. you just don't get on. You know, people. You know, whenever X Factor and Pop Idol and all that started in telly, mm. I think it. it you know, people thought, ah, oh, I can be an instant superstar overnight. It's not the way it works in the mm. real world, right? So um, whenever whenever I was in doing that, like I was I was in there from one o'clock on in the early hours of Saturday morning to six and then the Saturday night from midnight to six in the morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're trying to keep my eyes open yeah. and, and, and just get on and use the spare studio and just, you know, try to get on. And it's the best grinding I ever had. And plus as well as that, you make all your mistakes there, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's like, because I think... Comedy's kind of weird because, like, obviously you'll start out doing open mic or something like that. You know, you're not getting paid, or you're, and you're going to like weird and wonderful bars in weird and wonderful towns at you know weird times to do five minutes, and it's just because you need stage time, and that's real. That's real. That's where you learn how to do it. I'm but so intrigued by what you guys do. Really, I, I I love it. I love I love the craft. 
Um, I also love how everyone, I mean, you know, you arrive on the scene and I'm sure you get, you've, you, you went through turmoil, ups and downs in terms of driving places, trying to get on. Then you get on, some go good, some go bad. I'm always intrigued about how when you guys are all hanging out with each other, you only talk about the bad ones. You never talk about the good ones. Yeah, that, yeah. That, anything bad happened to me, I just want to, like yeah. bury that in the no, back we, of my head whereas you guys are just straight out with it as soon as somebody comes off with like a nightmare story it just reminds you of all it's sort of like you you sound like a dick but like you sort of bond <laughs> over that stuff because anyway you know when you if, if you're sometimes if you're talking about like oh I smashed here I, I did well there you, see, you know people go did you I whereas like if you go here there was this time I had this full nightmare in Balmain or full nightmare and Paul Gugglies or wherever it was, like, you know, worst gigs I've done historically, Ballymena, um, has not been a good place for me. Uh, I do love Dougie's Goodies, the bakery up there, but um, yeah. Here, by the way, just on Ballymena, the city of the Seven Towers. Yeah. Well, has anyone ever seen the Seven Towers? I've never seen the Seven Towers. I don't know if I'm happy calling it a city, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> there's, I've, I've always done, I've always pretty much done badly there, but I've, I've had a couple of howlers in Belfast as well, like absolute, nightmare gigs like just i would say too that we're off the charts like i go home and question my life like type of a you know what am i doing with my time type of a type of a gig but um what does chloe say to you whenever you come home and you've had a shocker so most most recently chloe's usually there for them so she'll see it live uh <laughs> she there was one there was one that she was she was there actually she's been there at the two worst ones Two worst gigs I've ever done in my life. She was there. And Did you think about leaving her at home for the third <laughs> one? <laughs> for one of them. One of them I came off and I literally went, I, I came off. This was this was so grim, right? So I wasn't even meant to be gigging. We'd just gone for the night out, right? We went to Pog Uglies, right? And Dave Elliott, the host's in there. And Dave arrived in like a, like a three-piece suit. He was at a wedding, right? He arrives in this amazing suit. And he goes to me, here, this wedding's good crack. Do us a favor, will you? Jump on, MC the second half for me. I'll go back to the wedding. And I went, no problem. Right? I went, yeah. Because this was on Thursday night. On the Wednesday, I'd had a screamer in Laverick's. Like a screamer, right? And I had new bits. And it, it was brilliant. And I went, no problem, mate. I can do that. And uh, and I go to jump on. All I have to do is five minutes. Bring on William Thompson. Literally go back up on stage and go give it up for William. And then bring on whoever was headlining. I think Shane was headlining. And I went on. Now, the gig had been a wee bit static, a wee bit stop start, and the crowd were a wee bit quiet. It's not an excuse. I went on, and there was a hu- there was one sort of large group on the, the left like st- left side of the room, like as I'm looking out at it, on stage left, like I'm looking out. And one of them, this girl was on her phone, right? And I said, like a, a, a stock line of like, you're a good crack being on your phone in the front row. And they hated it. They hated that I was even speaking to her. <laughs> Right, and I went, okay, and I said something over here to some other guy. He was a wee bit of an older guy, stock line. I went, I'm not saying you're too old to be here, mate, but your table does stink a piss, right? And we're sort of, and people normally love that, and he loved it, but his wife didn't. He loved it, his wife hated it, and he, because he literally went, <laughs> looked at her and went, <laughs> like that, and I went, right, banter, and then I tried to do a bit, and then that girl's phone went off, and I turned around and went, your phone like what like what is this right and i tried to do a bit of banter about her phone it just and just got not just etch shit right and it was like this is the worst gig ever and it, i mean it was so bad and chloe's sitting looking up at me going this is trash like this is ages ago to be first this is like this is like 2018 or something i came off stage literally went well uh here's william right <laughs> i bring william on and uh, I hand him the mic, and Chloe's sitting there, and I go, I need, I need to get out of here. And she goes, you've still got, and I went, I need to get the fuck out of here. And she was like, okay. And we left, and on the way up the road, I was literally just driving home going, why am I even doing this? Why am I even doing this, right? And she's just going, listen, it's a bad gig. They weren't a great crowd, but you were also a bit mean. Just like, you know, be, sort of be nicer. And I'm like... I don't need. To, I, I I don't want to talk about this. Like it was so grim. But like now it's like Shane ended up going. Shane, <laughs> Shane was fully pissing himself during it. By the way, like at me dying, like loving it, right? And as I'm leaving, I go over and I went, mate. 
I'm out. William will shout you on, right? And he's like, all oh, mates then. I went, no, fuck this place. I'm out, right? And then he's really laughing then, like laughing in my face, right? And then he sends me a video later that night of him on stage. He said the crowd were so grim. He ended up, I think, did he sing? Shane ended up singing like, uh, like what do you call it? Fairy Tale New York in like September. <laughs> Just to like make people feel better or something. There was some song like that oh, anyway. And he sent me a video of it and I was just I wasn't ready to laugh like and uh but now I laugh at it. But like in the immediate like and it took me about three days to laugh about it because it was like I was the worst and I had done I I like my experience had sort of been like I'd never really eaten shit. Like I I'd, I'd had gigs that weren't as good as others, but generally speaking, my worst gigs were okay. And I'd had that for a long time. And then in the space of about a month, I did this other one. I so I did I did one about a month before that that was horrendous around the corner from Pugs. And uh so in about a month I had these two, had like this really bad one. Then I had a couple where I went, right? I've regrouped, I went and did Lavery's, it was great. And then I had this and I was like, Right, I need to take a break here for a bit and actually think about why I'm doing this and I think it was then after that I sort of had the I think I chatted with Shane I chatted with Colin I chatted with Chloe about like actually people are trying to have a good night out here and that's I had forgotten about that I was very much in a I'm just going to say whatever I want not really care sort of a mode and that and now I don't know like I, I believe that's at the heart of like whatever, whatever good is happening now is that I've changed my attitude to it but yeah we end up Swapping the war stories is funnier. Do you know what I mean? Than going here, I did great, and people go right. I I did great. Whereas if you're like, here, do you remember that time you went to do this bit, and there was a guy sitting there just to hating you because like you know you're doing a bit about something that's affected them. Do you know what I mean? And then the whole room's looking at them sometimes. Uh, yeah. But know? it's part of the journey, right? It's a journey for everybody. It doesn't matter what your career is and what you do. You know, I look back at some of the stuff that's happened on the radio over the over the years, and some of the stuff whenever I've been doing live events that have happened. Um, and my wife Julia. It would, would have been with me the whole way through all mm. the early years and stuff like that there and she was the one I would have went here was it alright I don't know and she, and she goes yeah yeah it was great <laughs> it was great and then there'd be the one she, you would, she would go yeah 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 it was good and I go I know it wasn't good and she goes, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so that wee bit of re you, we all need that person for reassurance right yeah you need reassurance but you do also need you do need them to also tell you to wind your neck in sometimes. 100%. And know? that's the reason why you, you sort of changed your, your craft yeah, a little yeah, bit, right? Yeah, oh, loads. Like loads. Like where it's not to say that I won't come out. If I see somebody on their phone now, I'll, I'll probably, like in the front row, I'll probably go, mate. I'll probably say something and make a bit of banter of it, but it'll be, it's so much more clearly crack and not me just yeah. shouting at somebody. Do you mate. know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Put it in silence. Yeah. It's a bit, it's a, bit <laughs> of, a wee bit of crack though or just... It's like, I, I don't, don't do as much that at all. I used to come out and really want to rake around the room. I, I love insult comedy. Like, I love that, like, uh, like old comedians. That How do that. you take insult comedy when someone insults you? If, if, it's, if it's about me being fat, I'm like, this better, this better be the best fat joke I've ever heard in my life, right? If it's about anything else, my hair, state, my clothes, whatever, fine. By the way, Cooper Kai t-shirt, love that. It's great. I love it. Love that. Oh, we got me. I'm very happy. Um, yeah, so, like, so, like, the... I, I would never do insult comedy about someone's weight, their height, something that they can't change. If it's somebody's wearing a rare pair of shoes, for instance, that's funny to me. Do you know what I mean? Or uh, if I can say, here, mate, you look like, and it's not actually to do with like their face or something. Do you know? For instance, one, one that I did before would be like, there was this guy, he was just clearly a poser. He was very posery, the whole, like, he was all, a lot of this and a lot of like, you could see him, he's like, you could, you could, the sort of guy that when he's taking a pint off his mate, he's nearly like looking at his arm, you know, being like, just right? the guns. Just loving it, right? And I said to him, I went, mate, you look like a sort of guy who has a topless Tinder profile photo, right? So I'm not actually that, and all his mates were like, ah, like, I'm going, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, but I haven't actually said, I'm not going, mate, you look like this bad thing, or, you know, it's like a, there's a, there's lines in it, do you know what I mean? There's like, there's many subtle grades of what people are prepared to take off you. Whereas if you turn around to somebody and go, because I've seen some comedians do this stuff where they'll go, look at this ugly bastard here. And I'm like, well, that's not funny now. I, that guy's not having a good night out, is he? Whereas if you, sometimes if you sort of say you look like something that is cringy and rare, but also funny, like like a topless profile thing or, 
you know, there was a guy one night had like an absolute Jedward haircut. And I went, mate, I don't know if I should fucking, what was it I said to him? I went, I don't know if she'd climb your fringe or abseil off it, something like that, right? And like, he's pissing himself in because it's not about anything. I'm not actually going, here, mate, your, your hair's rare and your bird's stinking. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? You're, that's being a wanker. Do you know what I mean? So what I've learned from today is when I see your name on a poster, Kieran Bartlett, <laughs> if you just say beneath it, you'll have a good night out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guarantee, I guarantee a night out. You know, brackets good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I don't, I, and I really, I really don't do as much on at all. I used to come out and really rake around like ten people, and now it'll be, I'll, I'll come out and do my material. If somebody heckles or shouts something, I'll Third give game. them it. Or, or if there is something absolutely mad in the room that I had, like the other night, I was in Cookstown, Party Central, and looking good, looking was, great, looking great, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, and this guy. This guy was wearing a, a bit like a massive, like really bright, like yellow, like bright as the sun, yellow jumper. And as I'm plugging in the guitar, he heckles me. And I just went, oh, fuck me. I goes like, oh, fuck me. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Honeycomb has a voice, right? <laughs> and everyone loved that. Right? But, uh, you know, and then he shouted something else at me. And I remember saying, I went, mate, you know, do you know how rare that jumper is? I don't even have anything clever to say about it. It's just rare, Right. And his mates are slapping him, and he's smacking the table, and going, "They're having a good time." Like I'm not, I'm not coming in and going, "You're rare, you're this, you're that." Do you know what I mean? Another guy heckled me, and he was, <laughs> "This is funny though." But he was, <laughs> and he actually got a photo on all this guy after he was loving it. He he had like really long, sort of straggly hair and a big beard, and but he's wearing a baseball cap. You know, sometimes when people long hair wear a baseball cap, the hair kind of goes like that. So he had that, and he's wearing like a like a real scruffy hoodie, right? And he shouted something at me, and I goes, the Vietnam vet loves it, right? And and that's all. Like, I haven't even said anything, really. Do you know what I mean? But he was, they're laughing, like, whereas sometimes I maybe would have said stuff, and they would have laughed a wee bit, or, like, somebody maybe sitting beside them would be going, you'd see the, the furrowed brow, like, did he just say that? Like, and I, I don't miss, I don't need to do that anymore. Do you know what I mean? So I'm glad I'm not. Uh Maybe being, I'm, I'm glad I'm consciously trying not to be as mean as it used to be because people are trying to have a fucking good night out and there's nothing worse. I've, I've seen other people try and do some mental stuff sometime where you can see where the, they have gone overboard and you can see that you've actually pissed someone off to the point where they're going, I, I'm going to leave or I'm looking my money back at the end or something, you know what I mean? So I don't think I was ever in that space, but it definitely was twice in the space of eating shit because of coming out and just starting into somebody do you know what I mean like that the other one was even worse the other one was even worse um but I can't I can't talk about it on a podcast but um it was even worse than that uh I bet well basically I can't talk about it I mean basically what I did was it was it was at a charity event and I basically took the piss out of the reason for the charity but it was a specific person it was a specific it was an event for one person who Ge ge genuinely, when I was booked to do the gig, I believed they were dead. <laughs> right, and it was a fundraiser, and then that person was sitting there, and I'm going, "Why am I doing this gig for you?" <laughs> Whenever I, I was, I was basically told you were dead, and 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 I thought that was really funny that I had been like I'd been very much booked on the basis. Of <laughs> Of this person's death. You know what? I admire you for continuing <laughs> to do comedy after that. Because I, I, you know what? I want the ground to swallow me up. I wasn't even there. I came out. I, I'd been sitting there. The gig went on forever. I'd been sitting there for about... There was loads of comedians on. And they were all running over time. It had gone on for about three hours. I was literally going, I need to do a set and go home. I've, I, at that point, I was still working in the university. I was literally teaching the next morning. And I'm like, I need to go home. It's already about half twelve and I'm going on. And... um. I, I basically got, went out on stage and went, by the way, before I start this, I was told you were dead. This is mental. And they hated that. And I was like, it's the truth, though. Like, that is the truth. But um, I, I realize now if I was doing something like that, I, I just wouldn't. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't feel that urge anymore to truth bomb people as hard. But that was that was the worst gig. That was worst. And then a month later, I did the one in Pugs. And then it took about a year off. <laughs> It's just funny do, doing podcasts, right? Because um, I'm normally the person who's used to asking 
the questions, right? So I'm waiting here for the questions. But like you see during that whole thing, I've got about five questions I want to ask you. Yeah. Oh, I'm, not, I'm trying to, I'm really trying just to sit here and just say, don't say anything, don't say anything, wait for the question. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, know. I don't even have that many. Most of my questions are just about like, how did you get started in radio and stuff like that? Well, we'll get on to that in a second. Being a, being a lecturer at university, yeah. right? Is it a cushy number? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, it, it depends what you're, it depends what your role is, like, so... Because, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking to myself, like, you know, I'm sort of seeing myself a wee bit down the line here mm. now. You know, I could turn up maybe for an hour or two on a Thursday afternoon. Yep. Yeah, class. That would be extremely cushy. That's the way into it. That's the way to do it, though, is yeah. to get in on a job where you're doing, like, if you can get, say, say you're teaching, like, across three or four courses, get all your classes on one day and make that day pay you you know, a, mo- a month's wage. And next question, whenever I was at uni, I always remember one of my lecturers used to go to Students' Union and drink vodka and white at lunchtime and then three or four classes in the afternoon and then go and have more vodka and white at uh, sort of around dinner time. Mm. And I always remember as well, it didn't matter, it could have been April, but the Pogues fairy tale in New York was always <laughs> on the jukebox. Um, does that still happen? Drinking on camp? Yeah, I mean, would still, some of them would still go for a drink. I mean, I, I don't drink, so I would have gone for, sorry, I would have gone for more of a, I would have <laughs> gone. You can cut that I know, out. yeah. Some of them will definitely go for a drink. I would have been more likely to go and have a chicken burger on campus. But like, yeah, I mean, some of them definitely do that. And some people liked, I think I think there's less of the um, students going for a drink with the teacher. There's far less of that because that used to lead to issues, I think. But um, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have ever uh, drunk with students, but I would have had coffee with them. I would have all, so when I went to uni, uh, one of my lectures, I would have met him for coffee fairly regularly, uh, once every couple of weeks, and he always paid and insisted on paying for it, and it was because I was like a student and I had no money, and so I always did that. I would always insist on paying for coffee if I was meeting a student. Like, Kieran um, Bartlett, good guaranteed day. good night out <laughs> and a free coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's all real. Yeah. So like, but it is it's co- it's cushy. If you can get it on teaching only, it's very cushy. So sometimes, like, you'll have a research element too, which means you've got to produce oh, peer-reviewed research, which is, that's oh. that's the harder work. Whereas if you get it on a teaching only role. Can you get a teaching only role with someone else to do your notes for you? That'd be good. You can, you could get, you could get, um, like someone you might get notes off a predecessor. I, I, I did that. I, provi- I provided notes for people that were taken over from me. Uh, that's like because you're, provi- nice, provi- you're a nice guy. Back before <laughs> you changed your ways, you would have said you would have torn a new top and all. You I said, was screw you. Are you going to do it yourself? It's funny you say that because <laughs> there was one time when I was still working there that somebody. <laughs> it's just so bad now. So when I was leaving, I provided like all my lectures and all my uh, all lectures for the following term as well. I provided all that, but when I was still working there. <laughs> Somebody asked me, could they have notes because they were teaching a module that I had done before? And I did basically go, what do you think you're getting fucking paid for? (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I definitely know. Oh, mate, you've triggered me now because I definitely definitely remember saying the words, that's my IP. (laughs) Fuck's sake. Oh, I was such a knob five years ago. Ah, But you're not anymore, so it's okay. I know, yeah. I think I've, I've definitely turned a corner. The pandemic helped me turn that corner. Um... How did you get on during the, the pandemic? Radio still flat out. Thank goodness. Yeah. Because like nothing else was happening, mm-hmm. as you well know. So I was still able to go into the studio and Paolo and Rebecca were working at home for the most part, mm-hmm. which was, we made it work, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm very lucky that the relationship we had, like we, we finish each other's sentences, isn't that yeah. the, well, yeah, what yeah. song is that from, from Frozen? <laughs> anyway, as sad as that is, but that's sort of the way it is. So whenever... We didn't we didn't use webcams or anything so we could see each other or anything like that. We just did the shows we did the show and just listen. Yeah. And uh, it all worked out great. But it was horrible. It was just horrible. Yeah. Like you know yourself. I mean, you can sit in here and you can just you can do the podcast or whatever. The boys are still in the corner. Yeah. Um but you're just in that room and you're a cool totally on your own and they were at home. Um and the the thing for me which which set which sort of triggers me a little bit was that whole time, right? So I'm producing um, Oma Todd in the studio there at home and during the songs we were chatting down the line and my 
all I can think about during that pandemic was every single day for four hours being on edge to make sure the conversation that was happening between the three of us down the line isn't going out near. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and you have to remember as well that during the pandemic, everyone was at different stages. Mm. At different times. Yeah. So like there's people who are just had their fill of it. Someday maybe I was okay. You know, then there's isolation as well and people yeah. not seeing anybody. Like because as human beings, we're, we're meant to be together, right? And then you're being told to stay apart. And then some of the days I remember going in and maybe not being in great form or yeah. someone else not in great form and you're trying to pick each other up down the line and then conversation leads to this and leads to that and I'm going, ooh, this better not be going out on air. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so that's that, that was that part of it. Um, uh, the, the bit I liked about it was the fact that I got more time at home. So I got time to spend with my, my wife and my kids, which was great. And actually, um, like our close circle of friends, um, as you get older, I don't know whether it's like this for you, but certainly for me, as you get older, like your, your best mates are your best mates, but like you see them about once a year. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Right? Whereas during the pandemic, we saw each other every Friday night and Zoom. All right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Good, yeah, so yeah. so that, that, that was great. And now we're back to seeing each other once a year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it was so it was all it was all right. I just look back now and I think about what we've been through. And yeah. for, for life for I don't know what it's like for you for comedy, but for me with live events, the, it was like someone switched on the top. March just passed. Yeah, yeah. So it's like only six months ago. Yeah. And it's amazing how quickly you forget about what you were going through. Yeah. But when you look back at some of the stuff, yeah. I just think, what the heck was that all yeah, about? Yeah, because I, I think uh weirdly I have quite fond memories of the first bit. Like Mem like obviously I remember being freaked out and worried about people that I care about and all that but once we were a week or two into that six week bit the first one I was sort of like this is like time off and we I, I actually had a nice time like I really do and the weather was good we bought yeah. those yeah, do, the weather do you know those great, yeah. big Bertha uh, bean bags oh yeah yeah right. Right, yeah okay. like the fat boy type ones yeah, yeah 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 so we bought a couple of those there and stuck them in the back garden and yeah. it was class apart from whenever they first arrived and obviously homeschooling was a complete disaster mm. So they arrived and they don't put the, the, the beans in the bag. Yeah, yeah. You just have, oh, the, right. you have the bag and you've got to put the beans in it. Oh, right. So anyway, I arrived home and the kids, they found the box. And of course, as soon as the box arrives, fair game. So they opened the box. And um, then there was these two bags of the of the beans. Is that what they're called? Beans? What are they uh, the uh, called? Hang on, is what it is. The yeah. bean bag, right? Yeah. So it must be beans, right? So anyway, they then opened the plastic bag of the beans. And I walk into the house, right? And I swear to God, the whole place is just oh covered in beans. And the two kids are there. So it's no angels. That's mental. Floor. That's mad. <laughs> but the, yeah, I, I remember the, the early bit and it was like sunshine, good times. And then... And then the pub, the pub would deliver pints. Yeah, yeah. Class. Yeah, there was, there was, good, there was good stuff going on. But then I think for me, once... When, when it started to melt me was... So if that was like early 2020, I didn't mind the first little bit started really melt me once we sort of got towards the Christmas that year oh, and horrible. then the where it was like oh we don't want to cancel Christmas and you're like well we've all gone through this and it, and now it's just sort of being lifted for two weeks and everyone's gonna get sick again and you like you could have predicted that 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 melted me but yeah. then this year as you say like the kind of from so comedy wise I would say around like September last year it was starting to get going again but there's still rules and some restrictions and stuff. People wear masks and all that, but it was still getting there. And then once once we got after Christmas, been banging like look at the sales tickets and people are dying to go to live stuff at the moment, which is great. Yeah, it's really good. But, I uh, think I think that Christmas time for me was there was that fear of God. We thought we we're gonna have a normal Christmas. We we're promised uh, a normal Christmas and then they pulled the plug and that yeah. and that was fine. So then New Year's Eve, I'll always remember that. So we're sitting and only because I still find remnants of that New Year's Eve in our house. Do you know those big party can of things? Yeah, yeah. So we said, right, we'll, we'll we'll do the Zoom call like we do every Friday with our mates. So everyone's on Zoom yeah. we're in the house. That's fine. My wife thought it's a good idea to get two of these party can of things, mm. right? And they're quite big ones, right? And why I say you keep on seeing remnants of it, because the, the wee bits that come out are still like popping up every now and then, you know, underneath the table or underneath whatever. We do have a clean house, but yeah. just keep on coming up. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sitting, at the, I'm sitting ready to, to pop the party can and... On the Zoom. Right, 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 yeah. And I'm not great at reading instructions. I've got, <laughs> to, I've got to be really honest with you, right? So the party kind of comes out, and it's the, it's on the TV, Jules Holland or whatever, and then mm. that had that bit over London, which no one yeah, expected, yeah. With, the, with the drones and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Class, class. Yeah. T three, two, one, pop the party cannon. Didn't push it in the right way, straight into the crotch. A really, oh, really, really <laughs> sore. It'll live with me forever. At New Year's Eve every year now, I'll be thinking about the crotch incident. <laughs> <laughs> That's mental. What um, didn't you? Did you used to do? 
I know Cool FM definitely did this, and I'm wondering, did you do this? Uh, like, stuff for the Giants? Yeah, yeah. So this is, this is years yeah, ago. So like cool, when, so when cool, they were sort of first here. Cool like, still yeah. does uh, a load of stuff with the Giants. Um, anytime I'm at the Giants now, I go along as a fan to watch yeah. the ice hockey. I don't get that often. But I always, every time I go, I think I should come to this more. But many years ago, I used to be on the mic, uh, on I the ice. That. And um, uh, yeah, it was always did, it was um, always good fun. Did they? Uh, did you ever fire the no. subway gun? Right. I always wanted to I'm, do that. I am. I am both desperate to fire it and also to catch one. Like I don't know that I could do both from the same shot. I don't think I can run that fast. But like, mate, I don't know why I get so excited. I, this, I, I, I see that, and I'm literally like, this. This is the way sandwiches must be served. Like I literally, I love that. I love that thing. You see, number one, I'm, I'm a sandwich lover. Like if I, if I had to. Eat, only one thing for the rest of my life. It'd be a toss up between pizza and sandwiches. And at so the much. chance you get you get both. So you get the person oh, firing right. firing the thing and then you get the other bit where they go, I smell pizza. Yeah, I love and that. Then bit. People come down the aisles of the pizza. So I've been to the chance, I don't know how many times I've never got pizza or got the sandwich. I, right. I was I was near the pizza one time and, and the person shouted out so I got a slice. But the the rocket the rocket sandwich, that's like I know that, do you know what I do you know why I think I love that? And this is this is so weird, but this is where the synapses are, are right now. Do you remember Gladiators? The show? I loved right. Gladiators. I loved Saturday for, night. Yeah, right. It's coming back. I but, but people, I worry about but, but that. People forget it came back on Sky One about it ten did. years ago. It and did. And and it, it was bad. Wicked. It, it was, was wicked. There was one amazing episode on Sky though where so the, they made uh, everything was tougher. The the thinking being people are fitter now and you know, uh we're gonna get like amateur athletes like coming on here who are actual like pretty good athletes so they made the travel later harder and um th- uh, and like maybe the second or third episode on sky and i think you can still I see think this person watching it but well done this is good it's, knowledge this is unbelievable they they, they g- two guys go to run up the travel later and they both just burn on it right and they come back down and they go up and I, when i say they go up it about eight times and neither of them make it that like it it's excruciating the the clock's winding they've been doing the eliminator for five minutes right and they eventually ended up switching the travelator off <laughs> so they just they just run up like a ramp and you're like and the two of them are absolutely dead there's no legs when they get up the top oh it's so funny but yeah I, I worry about it coming back but you remember on the old ones there was there was one one of the games the gladiator stood behind like a like a big like a big gun thing that fire tennis balls. Yes. The, the the subway cannon reminds me of that. And and I just love so I'm getting like I'm looking at it going, there's a sandwich in there, but also going, you know, three, two, one like I, I love it. Do you okay, know what I mean? okay. Who was the who was the, the main man with the whistle on the gladiator oh, the original? Referee John Anderson. Yes. Good knowledge. knowledge. That is I loved very, it. Very Do you good. know I had um what was what was John Fashionese's uh the statement he always said? A wooga. He loved good. it. A wooga. He <laughs> loved it. And uh Ulrika Johnson and, and who was your favourite gladiator? Do you know I I loved Cobra. I loved I loved him on the on the, the rings for whatever reason. I loved that. I loved that he that he used to do the he used to do the karate kick when he came out. I loved that. Who was your favourite? Chet. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I'm like, Cobra sees muscles. <laughs> Just like straight in. Oh, yeah. Jet, Jet was excellent. Yeah. yeah very, very yeah, good. Yeah. I, I, I love that show. And you know what? My late dad, even though he never said it, I know he loved Jet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great times. I uh, I remember getting the, I got like, I think it was about six or seven when it first started. And uh, I got the Gladiator Annual, you know, like one of those books for kids. Like, and oh, like a hardcover thing, like, like panini stickers. Yeah, but it, no, but it, there wouldn't it be, wasn't yeah, even that many to it, collect. No, no, it was it was more like it wasn't. You didn't have to collect. I think it was like a, it was like, it was like a, a hardback magazine. That's right. basically what it was okay. like. And it came as part of my Santa left it right uh, as part of my presents. And um, man, I can remember still reading it. Uh, there was there was like information like Warrior talking about like what he had for breakfast, right? <laughs> And it was like, mate, that guy was just f- lying, lying about it. Like, at no point did he mention the, the roids that he was absolutely man on. It was like, it was like, he was just, he was like, oh, I'll get up, we'll have a steak for breakfast with eggs. And I was like, I should start doing this. Do you know what I mean? I was like seven. My mom was like, there's no way you're having steak for breakfast. <laughs> They're having like steaks and just like, like about 12 eggs a day each. And then like, there was stuff in it. 
there's stuff in it from Gladiators that only lasted for one season. Do you know what I mean? So like Flame, never saw her again. Or uh, there was a couple of other ones uh, that were never really in it. And um, it's just a ridiculous book. But I, I loved uh, I loved Shadow as well. I remember you used to beat the shit out of people with the, the pugil stick. I loved that. The one person I always think about when I think of Gladiators is not any of the Gladiators. But a girl who won Gladiators, it might have been the first season of it. Was she from Liverpool? Eunice. Eunice. <laughs> she won the Jeep. She won, she won the won Jeep. Jeep. And then and then I remember that she the, the big thing was that she sold the Jeep because she had no money. <laughs> I remember. So she sold the Jeep, she got the cash, and then she turned up as a gladiator like <laughs> I a couple remember of seasons. I later. remember that. I remember that. She was she came in as a gladiator when it was like it when they were doing, it, yeah, they were doing like the versus the Americans and all. I wick. I uh, mate, that's so funny. I remember her. I remember her. I remember there was a guy from here. There was a guy from here on it who uh, he was rare looking. Again, he had like a um, what do you call it? He had he looked like he was an Iron Maiden. He had that like long, just bushy curly hair, and he had it all tied back. And uh, I thought you were going to insult him. I know, I know. He can change his hair, and um, <laughs> he. Uh, <laughs> He, he he used to like take the piss out of Cobra. So when they were doing that hang tough thing, Cobra would come up on the platform, do his karate kick, and then this guy from here, which I love by the way, when someone is on from from here on anything, I'm like, oh, no. um, he was on it. He did the he did the exact karate kick, and then did another one, and it was like, is this guy throwing down with Cobra? And then Cobra would do like another move. And they like they hated each other. He beat Cobra on, on handcuff. I always remember that. I think he's like a, a legit fitness coach here now. The worst gladiator event has to be the Sky Track. Oh, ski ele- yeah, ski electrics track. upside yeah, down. Like and the other thing which always amazed me is how do they get them up there? Because if you're in the audience, that must have taken I know, time ages, to them up and ages all. like um I used to love uh I love what did you call the one what was it called Powerball or something like that? Where had the baskets and you had to throw the ball into them and it was like they would just rugby tackle people to the ground I loved that and I loved um, what do you call it I used to love the pyramid do you remember the pyramid it was like the corner of a pyramid and people would just like sometimes they're getting up to the top and then Wolf will just grab the back of them chuck them down loved all that Wolf banter as well you know who's afraid of the big bad Wolf and him like mouthing off at John Anderson oh, I love all that what a show do you remember um I was going to say, there was a guy I always remember on it, a guy, he was American, he was called Wesley Two Scoops Berry, because he always got two extra scoops of potatoes on his dinner. I thought that was banging. <laughs> I looked him up, <laughs> I looked him up one time, and I think he was in jail for quite a serious crime in America. Right, okay. Some but sort I can, of, Well, you know, I can't remember again, him. But like, know, what are you doing at lunchtime? Was he at the university <laughs> one day? No, no notes to do. Just, uh, I don't, whatever mate, happened, to, whatever listen, happened to him? Mate, you would not believe the amount of time I've spent down rabbit holes looking up contestants from various game shows and like looking up there was a moment i watched uh, a sheffield wednesday match one time in like 94 95 ish when they were good and when when chris waddle was coming towards the end of his, his career and there was a moment i have spent my life looking for this moment where chris waddle boots the ball in but he's very much like you know when you're gonna fall and it's all you're all over doing all this and he's running he booted the ball in and he's nearly running backwards because he's like really swung around to kick it and then he's nearly going backwards. And there was this moment where he just turns around and actually grabs on to the camera to steady himself. And there was just this moment where Chris Waddle's face is there and he's just like, I've spent my life looking for it. No joy? No. Like, I mean, every now and again, I'm annoyed that I've mentioned it today because I'll definitely feel an urge in the next week when I catch an R to just be like, Fre- a fresh a fresh Google for it like you know what I mean so, 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 it? you know what there's one moment uh, of television history that I would love to find and right. I like you have been online trying to find it I can never, I can never find it so it's around about 1990 it's the Italian World Cup right, right? and the big song is often, it's obviously Ness and Dorma Pavarotti yeah, yeah. and um, you know the way the song goes right well if my memory serves me right as a child I'm 10 years old Bob Monkhouse was on the telly on a Saturday <laughs> night right and he did this whole sketch and he changed the, the lyrics of the song. And the lyrics of the song went, <laughs> went something like, I keep my pigeons in the loft, <laughs> right? And then, and then it builds up and builds up and let them fly free. And he's got this like birdhouse type thing and then all the pigeons come out and all at the end. And I just remember as a child thinking this was hilariously funny. And I've been online more times than I've trying to find it. I can't yeah, find it. Yeah, uh, mate, he was banging like... Uh, did you have you seen the documentary about him? I haven't. No. There's a there's a brilliant documentary about Bob Monkhouse about like he was um 
he he was like a what's the word like an obsessive uh, collector of TV, like actually all footage. Like he um, recorded everything that was on. Like he 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 had made his money uh, early in his career. He made a lot of money, and uh, he he was uh, one of the first people to own uh, uh, like technology that could record from TV. And he recorded. He would have beta max and everything. I know. Yeah, he, he had, but he 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 kept it all in a shed in his garden that just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's where the pigeons flew out. Of. <laughs> <laughs> it kept getting bigger and bigger, and like he he had he would have all the radio times and TV times, and he had even got like in the days when TV was kind of. Like this, the like the schedule might change just according to like oh we're on five minutes later we're on like ten minutes early, he would write he would scribble out the time that it was meant to be on it and write in the time that it started and all and like he was obsessive about this and he, he actually had footage of things that like the BBC and ITV didn't even have anymore so like he, you know, it, but it was he would and he was librarian funny. yeah and he would have been but he was he was probably funny that guy like I mean because it's weird because I was. We're, Shane and I were talking about this about like some of these older comedians that were like you know ended up doing like game show host presenting and stuff but like they only got to do that because they had been absolutely smashing it on like the club circuit like do you know what I mean and Your like very own Roy Walker yeah absolutely I met I met him on uh, on a thing there I was talking to him on Saturday there for about a half an hour um Unbelievable! Just the Never best had a car. conversation with him. Used to see him come into Jenny Watson Banger occasionally for a pint. Uh, he here. He was full of crack. I can't talk loads about where I met him because it's it's gonna be a thing. But uh, uh, like really, like just top top banter. And like there was a couple of times where he was uh like dropping jokes that weren't for anyone's benefit, like but his own. But like I I could hear him through uh, uh earphones. So like. I know you can't say what it is like, but it sounds dodgy as hell. I know. <laughs> it was a wee TV thing, but I just don't want to say what he's doing in it. But like, he would drop a bit of banter. Oh, hold on a wee second like, here, right? No. You're going to do all Derry well, Girls here. Like, how they kept Liam Neeson in the final episode of Secret? It's beyond me. <laughs> hello, hello. But like, he he would just he would just come off. He, he came off with a couple of hangs where it's just like me and two other people, the only ones that can hear him, were wetting ourselves. Like, and I, but it, the, there's nothing funnier to me than somebody saying something funny that is for no one's benefit other than their own so like this one day <laughs> my my dad uh my dad would be like a really fussy eater like he wouldn't have anything you know he wouldn't like i think we, we got off a plane one day I, I i went traveling with him one time to rome and literally as we got off a plane my dad was like you smell garlic right and i'm like i oh, might smell it here in italy like and i'm um, just garlic used to turn him and all that and garlic was a real big deal for him garlic bread stinking wouldn't like the smell of garlic in the house he go out the back like it used to really drive him up a wall and um but he there was this one day um a couple of years before he died we're we're sitting i i was so he's sitting in like an armchair watching tv like this and sam's sort of sitting where you are but back a wee bit right so he doesn't really even know he knows i'm there because i'm the person that's watching this i was i was trying to do those do you remember jamie oliver did those 30 and 60 it was a 30 minute meal and a 15 minute meal so I was at the thirty minute meals thing, right? Where you basically do like a like a two course meal in thirty minutes. And I, I had, know no one who can do that in thirty and, minutes. And, and I know they all. T- I I had this one down to about thirty five, which was pretty good because most of them take about forty or forty five. But um, I had the book and I was sitting with the book and I'm watching the episode because I'm about to go in and make it for us, right? And my dad, I wasn't making it for my dad because I knew there was garlic in the thing, right? So I'm making him something else. So I'm sitting there with a book watching this, and he's sitting reading, he used to read the Irish News in the Mirror every day, right? So he's sitting reading one of them. And Jamie Oliver, my dad, would never watch a cooking show, never really cooked in his life, except to put oxo cubes in the beans. That's a whole different thing, right? But anyway, we're, we're sitting there, and Jamie Oliver's going, right, guys, 30-minute meal mindset, you know, get the kettle on, get the cooker on, everything's ready, you know, all your ingredients are out in the chopping board, you know, we'll get this going. Right, my dad, I just see my dad sort of going, right? And then he goes like, Jimmy Oliver's like, right, so you take a salmon, put it into the dish now, then you add in these, you add in, you know, passata, you add in basil, you add in whatever it was, all these different things, right? And then, and as Jimmy's talking, you gradually see my dad, the paper coming down, right, and the head coming up, bit of interest. 
he folds the paper down a wee bit then he's sitting there Jamie's going his salmon's this it's that you want to season it with salt you want to season it with pepper get it all in there take a whole chilli leave the seeds in and the paper gets folded down even further he's watching it now right I'm just sort of sitting watching him Jamie Oliver goes right this is this next bit some, some of you will say shouldn't do this but no messing about straight in there five cloves of garlic just straight in right and you just see my dad and this is you just want to guess no <laughs> just lifted the paper <laughs> it was so good it was it wasn't for anybody else it was the most understated no you've ever heard no it was fucking great I love that but um yeah shall we do one match you up for it yeah, so like before we start, there's absolutely no point in me playing this, right? So you see, as a kid, I, I don't to be honest with you. I see, as a kid, I wanted to be a gamer, right? Like I actually wanted it, right? So I remember whenever the Nintendo came out, which I loved. I remember seeing it on like ET or Ferris Bueller's Day Off or something, right? And you lifted up the flap, and then you put the the yeah. cassette in, and you push it down, you shut the flap. I wanted that. I just wanted to open. open. Yeah. So got the got the Nintendo, played Super Mario Brothers. Back then, the games. Felt like they were a hundred quid. Yeah. Right. Used to go down to a video store in Banger and rent them out. Yeah, yeah. The great. Legend of Zelda. What yes. a crap game. Really? Yeah. I, I thought it was good. I, I hated that. All right. I hated it. Right. So anyway, you used to, so anyway, that was fine. Spent a few months trying to be a gamer. Never really got on. Right. And then that was fine. So then the Mega Drive came along, and of course you get the free game like Super Mario oh, for uh, Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. So sold Nintendo. Upgraded to the Mega Drive. Got the Mega Drive. Played Sonic. It's just Super Mario. <laughs> it is. It is. But with spikes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So that was fine. So that was a wee bit. And then after that, I was just like, this I'm, This isn't for me. I, I just didn't have the patience, didn't have the time. And then I went to university, right? I live with three guys. Where, where did you go? Korean. Right. Where I lived in Port Stewart. What did you do? International business. Check, nice. check, check me out. out. Check yeah. me out, yeah. Now that's after I went to Jordan's time for first year and hit him, of course. Right, right. So I did architectural technology. Oh wow. Because I didn't have I didn't have the nerve to tell my careers teacher at school that I wanted to be a DJ. Right, right, okay. And so well you're good at technology, you need to go and do Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. So I went and I lasted six weeks and then I just went and got a promotions job and then my dad was a real stickler and he was like you have to finish first year. So I had to do my exam. So he passed that, not that it mattered, and then went to Korean. Right. So anyway, I'm, at Co- I'm in Korean and um, getting, to, getting to class on a Thursday morning was just grim because it was Kelly's and a Wednesday mm. night, right? So I remember we used to take it in turns for accounts to go once every four weeks. Right. So it was my turn to go on a Thursday morning to get the notes. Like you'd, not, you'd wrapped up the party about four or five yeah, yeah. and I'm trying to get myself into university at half past nine. So I get myself into university at half past nine, have the most horrific day. It's like three hours of accounting. Like, it's just grim. Come back, right? And the boys I live with, they're still in their boxer shorts. They've been up since 11. And they're just... <laughs> all day playing FIFA. Do you want to game? No. And that's all, that. that all reminds me of. The boys at uni sitting in their boxer shorts playing <laughs> FIFA. It's my life. And I, and I, <laughs> the thing about it is, I'm so wick at it. I might as well just set the controller down here and just let you... That's, just I love me. that. But I love by that. the way, tell me this. What? Why do you get such a buzz out of chinning someone ten nil who's got absolutely no interest in playing? Because I think it's right. I I link this to, I link it to when Man United get drawn in the third round of the FA Cup. Every now and again, they'll have to play a non-league team. You still have to you have to beat what's put in front of you. Like, someone in the Vanarama Premier League. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and no, I don't mind if you if you were th- if you loved FIFA, I'd still I'd play the same as if you don't love it. Because you know you're a professional. Because I'm, I, I am dispassionate. I am, I, I, I dispense with people without thinking about it. Yeah, it's all good. Can you? Can you set that up? I can do a penalty shoot. I'm yeah. all, I am all for the penalties. Um, there's something going Just on with the color the, here, by the way, on the TV. The I don't know if it's an Xbox thing or a TV thing. If by the way, can, have a can, look. I, can I refer to your username here on FIFA? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you are Mr. Big One Two Three Four One Two. Nineteen eighty six. Nineteen eighty six. Right. Okay. Um, so if I go to, all I can think about is that is that song, Mr. Big, to be with you. Oh, it's a great. Uh, do you know it's a great song? To be fair. Come on, baby. Come on over. Let me puke on your pool over. Um. <laughs> so what, Dan? How do you do? You know how to set this up? So you do just do a penalty shootout or? All right, hang on. Oh, here, I don't do know what every good engineer does, Dan. Turn it off and turn it back on again. 
Is that is that the way forward? I think so, yeah. All right, okay. Here, do you want me to do it from here? Yeah. Right, let's see if it works. Um, see, boys, it's a bit now you're going to have to edit out. Yeah. Oh, no, we'll leave this in. The fans love this. Um, this is this is behind the scenes. This is no no blasters. This by the way, great injury. name for a podcast, by the way. Thanks very much. Reminds me of being in primary school and whenever we were P5 and you're allowed to play football on the playground. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, that was a and key then, rule. And then, and then you rule. stood there on the wall and someone comes up and two pokes it right <laughs> into the... <laughs> yeah, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the party popper, as they say. Yeah, into the... Into your thigh, I always found was worse. Do you ever get like a stingy one there? Like, I used to do nets, so I used to get this a lot. And the worst, the worst football for it was those rubber miter ones, you know, ones that your school would have had. Oh, mate. They'd leave the print of the ball on your leg. It was the worst. Uh, I think it's working, yeah. Colour the, the color saturation is back. The caser would have been the football back then. The caser? The what caser. was that one? Proper leather. Oh, really? And it was, and it was, it was like blown up like far too hard and you see if you got that in the loaf like knock Get, you getting those yeah getting those ones that are blown up too much uh in the in the face used to be great crack as a as a keeper so i think you're always man united uh, i am yeah i'm just saying i don't know I'm not sure you can. is there not a way to do this dan no oh i don't think so oh god do I've you mind suffering through a match 10 minutes of this um i'm definitely definitely oh i can see i can see getting a park i can see i can see what the shortest match is hang on uh, where are we? Where are we? Um, settings. Somebody help me. Um, I can't. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. This is us getting into it now. Customize. Uh, this is top banter, by the way. But um, I've always thought this. Whenever I, I've, I've back in the day, and the Mega Drive was going through the settings, going on this class. Yeah. See whenever. Uh, oh, here that's the wrong thing. See whenever. Um. You were saying there about about those uni days, like see see getting we can go for a three minute a half match, so that's quite short. Still six see, minutes of time I yeah, never gonna get back. See see back in uh see back in those uni times. See I remember one time we had we had a party I lived up in I so I I went I did journalism in Coleraine just for the year and then I went back and did my doctor there but I was living in Belfast then. But uh, so shows us we second. Oh well, yes. Um, I'll uh, so yeah, I Liverpool by the way, not the yes, mate, but no, Liverpool. No worries. And uh, and uh, I went there for the year, and I was when I was doing journalism. Uh, it was I think it will be United Liverpool. Here we go. Here you go. Sweet. So okay, sorry, quick rundown. Pass, shoot, hoof like a boot or a cross, and. A through ball. Then when you don't have the ball, slide tackle, stamp tackle, and then this changes your man. This makes you sprint. Oh, and you lost me about ten minutes ago. Oh, no. play. You'll get it. You'll get it. Don't worry. Um. So. Oh, you look at you. You're even practicing free I know, kicks. And all the the legend, the the wee boots now at the start. You'll have to do laps of the pitch to warm <laughs> up and all first. <laughs> and uh, so they um, we did. So anyway, we had we had this party. There was this went out. One night, went to the Anchor in uh, Port Stewart. Great place, every Tuesday and Thursday. It was great, right? And so we went and uh, we went and got wrecked in the Anchor. And then somebody said to me, you know those fateful words? You hear somebody goes, here's a party after. And you're like, right, is there I? So we went to this party and the party started at like three in the morning. So at about seven, the party was kind of wearing down. And... Um, uh, it is so poor. Do you know what I remember being so depressed? And you were saying about that thing of like you can't get up in the morning and go in because you're wrecked. And um, I went. I remember coming home to my house and one of the uh, one of the girls that I was living with, uh, she she used to drive us into uni. I'm really she, not doing anything here, by the way. The computer seems okay. to be no, running up it's, themselves. It's all good. And um, she um, she was she was downstairs getting ready to go to uni the next morning. I remember walking in the house. You know what? You know when you just reek of the night before? You reek of the drink. Oh, there we go. Like, I mean, it's been coming. Don't worry. And um, I st- I just have to do it. This satisfies. I don't know what it is, but there's a deep need in me to just... I don't encourage him playing. But um, the, uh, the... The... What do you call it? So she's literally getting ready to go out to uni. I remember walking back into the house. I'm still probably a bit drunk. I walk back into the house and she goes, you going to university? And I went, 
Uh, and I remember lifting, stinking a drink, lifting uh, my, my wee uni bag that I had and uh, going straight in, in the class. We had a three-hour shorthand class. I don't know if that means anything to usins, but for me, that's not a good time. I remember writing the <laughs> words. It's the only time I've ever done graffiti in my whole life. I graffitied on the wall beside where I was sitting. I feel sad. Yeah, hold on a second here. You haven't told me how to run with the ball. Oh, you just use that. Oh, that one? Yeah. I was doing the other one. That's the reason yeah, why Yeah, so watch it. I'll give you it back here. Hang on. Okay. Look, the game doesn't even want me to give you it back. Oh, there, there you go. go. There you go. Well, why not? There you well, go. Oh, flying there. Well, I wouldn't say flying, but... Or as we, we pass. Just putting moves together. <laughs> um, I remember just writing, I feel sad on the wall, but I actually wrote it in shorthand, which is probably the best bit of banter I've ever dropped my whole life. Unbelievable. Tell me yeah. this. Where do you live in Port Stewart? I lived in Millstone oh, Mews. Millstone it's Mews. quite nice. Yeah, I live in the village of Sin. <laughs> Where's that? Old Mill Grange. <laughs> Old Mill Grange. I, 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 only, I only call it that because that's what a taxi driver used to yeah. call it. We used to always get the Kellys. Yeah. And then he would have said, oh, where are you taking to tonight? Boy, it's the village of sin. Uh, oh, where's yeah. the party at? Old Mill Grange was, uh, was, I would say, more controversial than the Holy Lands as a, as a, a place. That is a big statement. I think, I think, I think because it's a smaller scale in, in a smaller town, it, like... It it was mad in there. What was your takeaway choice on the north coast? Uh where would I have gone? Do you know if I'm going across the whole coast, it's got to be Morton's and Ballycastle. But when I was living up there, there was the was it Sea Fry, Super Fry, Super Fry. You used yeah. to go to Sea Fry was my that's right. Sea Fry is over near my old school. I used to go there. Yeah. Super Fry, Super Fry in Port Stewart. Yeah, that was the chippy of choice that for was, me. That was mine back in the day. I used to do a nice wee curry chip in there. Yeah. Um, but if you're going to Port Rush. Dolphin all day long. Oh really? I do you know I didn't really go to Port Rush that often unless Come I was on, going you would have been Kelly's. Tra- you would have been to Kelly's on a Monday night. On the, on I'm sorry, not Kelly's. Sorry, tracks on a Monday night. Oh no, never. Brian Moore, the legend. No. Oh come on! When it's time to dance, it's time to make tracks. <laughs> that was the wee sting he used to play at the end of this at the end of the night. <laughs> oh no, that's not. Uh, that's that would not have been me. I would have been more likely sitting in at the, end uh, of the first in half. Anger. Yeah. Only one nil. I'd have been more likely sitting in the anger. You're wick. I was like, I am so I wick was, at this right, and you're only one nil up. <laughs> You are wick. I'm being I'm being a, a gracious host here. Um, what when? How long was Brian Moore doing up there for then? He's still doing well. It's still open now. Still be doing. I bumped into him on the beach the other week. He's a brilliant guy. Brilliant guy. But anyway, yeah. So he was the, he was the man. Um, Would you have been so? You're probably about the same age as my my brothers, right? Uh huh. So would you would you have been into the dance music scene here in oh, the nineties? Mate, that's, that that's your what thing? got me going. Yeah, so I started DJing when I was fourteen. Wow! And then I started. To, there was no YouTube. I didn't know any DJs, so it took me forever to learn that the aim of the game was to match the records in terms of the beats. Aye. So I started then DJing out and about when I was seventeen, and um, that was it. And then uh, the other thing about getting onto radio was I always wanted to do what I was doing now, but I didn't think I would have the, the conversation for it and whatever else. So I thought the best way in was through dance music. Yeah. So mix the songs and then just have to back announce what you've played. Aye. Yeah. And that's how I started. That's mad. And then how long were you how long were you at that then before say you were doing radio then? So I started cl- in clubs when I was um when I was uh seventeen and then Oh, 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 sorry, here, so I'm just... Sp- I'm just Fabinho here, just slaughtering through the midfield. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, oh, so, so where do you, how, do you, how do you slide tackle? X. X. Yeah. Right, so anyway, um, yeah, so seven, I can't... You know what? I'm being a really bad... No, uh, no. I, I, I'm showing here that I cannot multitask. No, but no one and I have can. been telling my wife for years I can multitask. No I, one I can. can't. This is what No Blasters does to people. It, it, puts you, it puts you in the nether zone of your brain. You're always between two things. So anyway, 17 I started, and then I was on the radio when I was 19. Right. That's mad. So like, so were you sort of, that must have been good times then, though, when Ask. you were at uni, because you're already on the radio. I was, go, I was going to Edinburgh, you see, after that Aye. disaster over in Jordanstown for year one, I was going to Edinburgh. Right, And right. then, uh, the reason I stayed here is because I got a foot in the door at the radio station. Right, right. Okay. So I'd go to Coleraine and then drive up and down, if you know. Good times. And yeah. so... Do you think whenever you were at uni then you were doing that stuff and you were gigging, say, like out doing I was DJing? Put, I, was, yeah, I was putting like sh- nights on the uni and I yeah. was DJing in the house. But my favourite party in our house was in St. Patrick's Day. I'll never forget it. I We had like my mates and all from like who were across the water came over. Yeah. So we must have had about 30 people in the house. Yeah. And this is a really sad story, but anyway. <laughs> 
It's 56 old Mill Grange. <laughs> and um, so it's St. Patrick's night and like the place was rammed. Like, people were sleeping in the bath and all. Oh my God. And the decks were in the living room. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it got to the end of the, it got to the stage where it was time to knock it on the head because yeah. the police had arrived. Right. And I'll never forget getting someone to help me get the, the decks upstairs, right? Yeah. I locked it myself in my room with my decks because I was afraid the police were going to confiscate them. <laughs> How That's sad funny. is that? That's great. That's great. I'm, I'm in the wee box Trim room. It. I'm in the wee box room, you know, with that wee piddly lock <laughs> closed, worried in case I was going to get all my gear confiscated. As if, as if that lock would have kept the police. Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. So. That's a great story. I remember, uh, I remember just our ones used to go like, my brothers used to go to the Manhattan when yeah. it was, that uh, was the M Club. It was. I was in there, there and I used to go to Exit 15 in Dungannon. Oh, Eddie Ray's place. Yeah. I was never in it. Yeah, Eddie Ray, yeah. Because he, our ones would have had, um, my three brothers would have had like mixtapes of his and all. Um, Eddie Ray and Tizer. And the Ed Bin Man. Tizer. Tizer. The Bin Man. And Tizer, Mo- the three, the three Modell, deck wizard. Mickey one? Modell. Mickey's, yeah. still on, Mickey's still doing all his stuff with Clubland. Is he? Yep. I remember, and and they liked. There was a Scottish. Oh, crew. what a save! What a save. save! You weren't even going to say what a save. <laughs> you weren't even going to say that. <laughs> there was a Scottish crew that they liked called QFX. QFX, they were massive. yeah, yeah, QFX, Ultrasonic, yeah, um, QTEX, oh, the Power of Love. Listen, it's weird we, though, we, because we can talk about I was this never, all day. I was, I was never uh, overly into that music, and I was never like a part of that because I was too young. You were playing the guitar. Uh, yeah, and then I got into like guitar and all that, but like. It was like I sure I would have been more into like metal and all that, but um, my uh, my brothers were flat out into that like and like when Scooter was, you know, when Scooter was doing like back in the UK and all that sort of stuff and Stuttgart and all they had all the, stu- st- uh, what do you call them Scooter and the time frequency and all these weird dance acts they were into. Yeah, so I went to see Scooter. In the King's Hall, oh, so did my brother in 1995. So did right? My right, and he had just <laughs> released back in the UK. Yeah, but this is how sad it is, right? So obviously it's the mid 90s, right? Yeah, and I remember the conversation walking up a Lisburn Road to go to the King's Hall to see Scooter. Yeah, because obviously he had just released back in the UK, but he had also done a version for Ireland called Back in Ireland. Right, and okay. And we're going up the Lisburn Road, and the conversation is. What do you think he's gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> is it gonna be back in the UK? Yeah, yeah. Or back in Ireland? That's, a gag. That's funny though. And then I I uh, I opened for him in Belfast. Did you? Yeah, in the summer there, but also the year before wow. in, in Custom House Square, which was a which was a like a full circle type Have thing. Have you met Scooter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, what is he? What's he, he like? He's really he's he's such a cool guy, really? and he's got a manager called George, and George right. is just like, ah, Pete, you bring the party, <laughs> and um, and he's so cool, right? So <laughs> anyway, so anyway, I t- this is so funny to me. I can't. I just. I so love I, that you've met him. Yeah. I love that. And, and he's right. So, anyway, but I, t- you see the story I just told you about walking up a list for road? I told him that. Yeah, yeah. This was night one of the show. And then the next night, he did like a medley of all the, the scooter tunes from right, around yeah, that yeah. time, end of summer, back in the UK. Yeah. Da 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 da. And it's great. That's amazing. Really, man. really good. And, he's, and just, a, just a really nice guy, pretty unassuming. That's funny. Like, he, uh, do you know what it is? I, I I'm assuming, but like if Scooter walks into your room, like you know it's Scooter. I I uh, I I think I I so with that early stuff, I I remember that like because our ones were flat out listening to it. But then all the other stuff, like the logical song and all that later stuff, Chloe remembers that more. So there's this weird a weird thing it happens occasionally when we're out for a drive, where we 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 like going for wee drives, and occasionally one of us will just be like. Scooter for for the next hour. Let's do it. Raking along as if you, you know. You've seen the price of petrol. You won't be driving for an hour any time soon. I know, mate. If if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't killing the comedy wise. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I just say, and I'm not blowing my own trumpet because I didn't well. I didn't really know what I was doing there. Well, but you only beat me one 0 I did. I did. I haven't said that. That was half the length of the game I would normally play. So I could have done two 0 I was also being. Somewhat gracious, okay. I was hitting a lot of shots from outside the box. So, in other words, what you're saying is you have changed your tact. That's with, what it did. With playing FIFA in the I same way you as you've, have a you've, good night. you've changed your tact with the comedy. I do want having a great time. Well, thanks very much, mate. Well, here, thanks, William, for coming on. Thanks, Usins, for joining us. We will, uh, we will see you in the next one. Take it easy.